Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to have a short Bible study on Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 to 4. Look here at the story of Jesus healing a leper outside of Capernaum. After Jesus had come down from the mountain, large crowds followed him. Suddenly a man with a virulent skin disease came up, and bowed low in front of him saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can cleanse me. Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him saying, I am willing, be cleansed, and his skin disease was cleansed at once. Then Jesus said to him, Mind you tell no one, but go and show yourself to the priest, and make the offering prescribed by Moses as evidence to them. We're using the New Jerusalem Bible, which translates the Greek lepros as virulent skin disease. Now, in antiquity, the condition covered a whole variety of skin diseases, but not the same as the modern leprosy known as Hansen's disease. It was the Norwegian physician Gerhard Amara Hansen who, in 1873, identified the bacterium Microbacterium leprae as the causative agent of leprosy. And it wasn't until the invention of antibiotics that the two forms of leprosy could be cured by long periods of antibiotical treatment. So the man comes to Jesus and bowing low in front of him says, Lord, if you are willing, you can cleanse me. Lord, kurios in the Greek, can mean no more than sir, a polite title of address. However, in Matthew's Gospel, Things are not quite as they seem. So who in Matthew's Gospel calls Jesus Lord? Well, strangers, enemies and Judas Iscariot always greet Jesus with teacher or rabbi, but never with Lord. In chapter 8, a scribe approaches Jesus and says, Teacher, I'll follow you wherever you go. In chapter 9 the Pharisees say to Jesus' disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? In chapter 12, some of the scribes and Pharisees say to Jesus, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. In chapter 17, the collectors of the temple tax come to Peter and say, Does your teacher not pay the temple tax? In chapter 22, the Pharisees sent their disciples, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God, and so on. And in chapter 26 Judas, who betrayed him, addresses Jesus as rabbi. What about Lord then? Well, never used by strangers and enemies, but by those who seek out Jesus in the belief that he can heal and save, they never called him teacher or rabbi, but always Lord. The centurion in chapter 8 says, Lord, I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. And the disciples on the Sea of Galilee in the same chapter, Lord, save us, we are perishing. In chapter 12, Peter says to Jesus, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Boat trouble again. In chapter 15 a Canaanite woman addresses Jesus, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David, my daughter is tormented by a demon. In chapter 20, two blind men to Jesus passing by, Lord have mercy on us. And the disciples in chapter 26 to Jesus, surely not I, Lord. This is at the Last Supper, when Jesus revealed that someone sharing the meal would betray him. The disciples said, surely not I, Lord. Judas said, not I, Rabbi, an important distinction. Matthew employs Kyrios, Lord in order to give an exalted position to Jesus, an authority to this specifically divine. And this is perhaps best illustrated when Matthew quotes Jesus in chapter 12 as saying, For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. We can also note that a difference between the healing ministry and the ministry to those with leprosy. The sick are healed, lepers are cleansed. And this is because leprosy not only was an unpleasant and life-threatening disease, but it also made the person a social outcast. The leper was outside the community. He met Jesus outside of Capernaum. He couldn't enter the town. 
And when Jesus cleansed a leper, he not only healed, but he reinstated as a member of the community. The turning point of this story, the pivot on which this story turns, is in fact the words of Jesus. He reached out his hands and touched him. And that is a wow moment. That is an awesome gesture. What did those think, those who addressed him as teacher and rabbi? What's this man doing? He is now ritually impure. But he who is Lord of the Sabbath is also Lord of the Torah, Lord of the Mosaic Law. He doesn't acquire ritual impurity. He cleanses from ritual impurity. Matthew intends the members of his community to see themselves in the leper and in the earthly Jesus of the story to see the risen Jesus who promises his abiding presence. The church can thus experience the saving power of the risen Jesus in the past experience of the healing of the leper. The story is at once and at the same time a model of prayer, a teaching on faith, a revelation of the person of Jesus and experience of salvation. And as it spoke to Matthew and his church, so it speaks to us today. It tells us that whenever we need to come back to Jesus and say, please, Lord, to reach out our hands, he will be always there. He'll reach out, touch us, lift us, and cleanse us, restore us to health of body and spirit, and restore us to our position in his community, the church. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. A new video will be posted in about a month's time.